Welcome. Grab a second cup of coffee this morning and we'll have a conversation. The first question I ask, new couples coming in for premarital counseling, what's the limit? What's the last thing that you'll allow to happen before you dump this turkey? Get rid of this person who's become nothing but a burden. And the people coming in look at me and say, I would never do that. This is the person I love. We get along wonderfully. There's no problem at all. We talk, we share, we love. We get along great. I said, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I'm really excited for you. I'm very pleased for you. Now, what happens when it doesn't go so well and you're really in a struggle? Think about for a second. If he ended up with a gambling problem or became addicted to drugs, would you stay with him? If she ran up the credit card bills way beyond what you could pay, or had medical issues that put her in terrible distress physically, would you stay with her? Here's the issue. We love and we get married, we start relationships, we, I don't care whether you move in together or whether you just decide that this is going to be the, the, the perfect one and you start renting out the reception halls. We all do it with the same attitude, we all, the, the same desire to have life in all of its great happiness. But it doesn't stay that way always. And what you decide to do during the difficult days is going to be the key matter about whether your marriage endures or whether it comes apart and you separate. Now, let me just explain to you a little bit here. I want marriages to work, and I've seen miracles happen. So I don't have any question that if you listen to these words, your marriage can become better. You can do better. I, I started counseling my first marriage counseling back in 1976. You know what I found? There isn't anything, nothing, that can't be fixed. I've seen a lot of marriages and a lot of different circumstances, a lot of variety to the people that, that come into my office or touch base with marriagehelp.com or on the Facebook Marriage Help or on the Facebook Understand and Respond tragic situations. And there have been a small, very small handful of marriages that did not survive after working through all of these lessons. But there have been thousands that are together today that wouldn't have been otherwise. God has a plan for how to make your marriage the best part of your life. Now, having said that, I want to give you some very simple guidelines as to how to understand why you run into problems almost immediately. Some people start arguing before they get through the honeymoon. I guess most couples would start their disagreements before they even get through the honeymoon. 
Doesn't take long. And the reason why is because God made us fundamentally different. Fundamentally different. It's hard to say that with enough emphasis. L let me explain it a different way. We all carry in our cars or trucks or vehicles or boom boxes or whatever, radios. We all know what a radio is, picks up the signals from the air, plays music, you know, get the news, get the warning from the uh, bad weather coming. It all comes over the radio. But there are two kinds of radios inside of each of the radios we have today. One is called an AM receiver, and the other one is called an FM receiver. Now, you don't need to become a radio technician to realize that the AM stands, stands for amplitude modulation. FM says frequency modulation. There's two different kinds of signals that come through the air. They both come to your car, they both come to your truck, they both come to your, uh, you know, player, whether it's a boombox or whether it's a um, some other kind of radio receiver. They both come in there, it's a radio, it's a radio, it's all the same. But there are two different kinds of signals. If you want to look for your channel, you better know whether to look on the AM band or whether to look on the FM band. And if you try to find a channel that you're looking for that's an AM channel on the FM channel, you're not going to get it. But it's a radio. You should get anything on the radio. You do, but you have to understand the signals are different. In marriage, in marriage, you're built with two different kinds of signals. Signals. And you pick them up differently. You listen to them differently. You, you are built to tune in things because you're built differently. Let me explain. I'm going to ask you to take a piece of paper and make a diagram. So we're going to do that right now. I'm doing this so that you can have your own personal copy of this diagram that helps you understand how things work. And so I'm going to start over here. The first word we're going to put on here is respect. And then we're going to put over here Cherished, all right, and we're going to put the line across Okay, so that gives you a picture of how your diagram is supposed to look respect over here Cherished over here. All right Okay, now you've got your piece of paper there one side says respect the other side says cherished. Well, what does that mean? Well, because God put us together, all the way from our fundamental DNA, with different needs, different questions, different emotions, different ways of coping, most people don't understand it. They think people is people. We're all the same. We're all built the same. We eat the same food. We listen to the same music. We we're the, go to the same schools. We think it's wonderful that we put boys and girls together in the same classes all the way through. Didn't used to be that way. Used to have boys in one class, girls in another class. 
Why? Because through many of the grades, they learn differently. They respond differently. Uh, it's as simple as this. Boys play basketball. Girls play basketball. It's the same, right? No. Every coach of a boys team has a real challenge coaching a girls team. And the same goes true for a girls coach can have real difficulty coaching a boys team. Why? Because the style of what you have to do to get the performance out of those teams is fundamentally different. Now, your chart, look again. On the left side says respect. God's word says that men are put together with a very deep need to be respected. Uh, call that any kind of way you want to. Honored is the word that the, the King James uses. We even use it in our marriage vows, or at least we did years ago. Honor, respect, obey, A couple of the ladies I've worked with said, take out obey, I don't want to obey nobody. Well, what they didn't realize is that makes the relationship more difficult in the sense because if you don't respect somebody enough to say, that idea, that suggestion, that plan of action is worth consideration. You don't really, you're, you're not going to have a happy husband. Why? He needs to be admired. He needs to be looked up to. He needs to have admiration. Well, there have been ladies I've talked with through the years. That's just ego. He just got a big ego. He's just an egomaniac. He's just no, he's built with that need. Well, he doesn't earn my respect because of this and this and this and this. And they go through the laundry list of all the th crazy things he's done. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I've heard the crazy list. Takes men a long time to realize that respect doesn't just come because you wear a wedding ring. You have to earn it. You have to do respectful things. You have to do things worthy of being admired. You have to do things that show you have a strength of character and you have a, you have a firmness of mind that isn't just stubbornness, but it's an absolute rock-solid commitment to do what must be done. It's easy to respect someone who has an honorable, worthy character. But almost all of us have flaws. We do dumb things. And a guy did a wonderful job taking care of his wife through a major traumatic issue. I mean, he did... He, he, he did such a grand job. I was so proud of him. He was a rock when she needed him the most. And as soon as they got through the crisis, he went out and bought a car that was too expensive for them to afford and just about bankrupted them. Yeah, oh man. How do you respect somebody that makes a bonehead move? But he did what he was supposed to do. Okay. On the left side we see respect, admired, looked up to, appreciated, held in awe. On the other side we see cherished. I have a game that I play. It's not a game game. It's not trivial. But I'll have couples come into my office or I'll talk with them and I'll ask the two of them, when was the last time you woke up in the middle of the night 
and wondered whether or not you were still loved as much as in times past. And almost universally, almost without any exception, in fact, I don't remember an exception, the men have all said, I don't remember ever waking up in the night asking that, wondering that. And almost without exception, every lady, whether girlfriend, significant other, fiancé, wife, spouse, partner, she will sort of shyly turn around and say, well, just the other night or just last night or frequently, why? Because while a man wants respect, a woman wants to be cherished. The Bible says that a man is supposed to love his wife so intensely, so publicly, so demonstrably, out in the open, clearly evidenced, that he loves her so fully that he would rather willingly part with great gobs of his bodily existence, his entire body, to demonstrate how much he loves his wife. The way it's said in Scripture, the way Jesus gave up his entire body, every drop of his own blood, to take care of the church. That was the example that was given of how a man is supposed to love his wife. His, his partner, his, but it's his one and only. Any woman that wants to be happy, that desires to be happy, to be at peace, will be cherished by her husband. Cherished, treasured, valued. If you are not held as the most valued influence, person, relationship in your husband's life, you're not going to be happy. Women are designed to weigh their relative value in the heart and mind of their spouse. They're always constantly weighing to see if they're loved as much as they had been before. Men, on the other hand, tend to just say, well, uh, I'm going to count how much I love her by the number of dollars I spent at the last birthday or Christmas anniversary. And they'll rattle off the value of the diamond earrings they got and the number of dollars they spent on the vacation and cruise, and they will talk about how much they spent on, uh, you know, Christmas presents and getting the new car and, the, you know, moving into another house and the rent that they have to pay over what they used to pay and, and how much their mortgage is. And they rattle it off with the same casual attitude that they tell about their golf scores. Well, I got a eight under on this one, and I got two over on that one. And women know in their heart that keeping score by looking in the checkbook doesn't measure whether or not they're cherished or whether it's just, oh well, something that has to be done an obligation that has to be fulfilled. I have to have a gift. I have to have a present. And I might as well, if I want to feel good about it, I'll get it one that has a lot of value. They don't do that. If you don't care, those diamond earrings are just worthless trinkets. 
I want your marriage to be strong. I want you to have life in all of its abundance. God's Word gave us the instructions how to do that. But women who are trying to be cherished, who desire to be treasured, who want to be highly valued, get the idea that they have to challenge their husbands to be more loving. And almost automatically, they come at the problem by making him feel less worthy of respect. Respect is a strange thing. If you can't get it because you're doing the right things the right way for the right reasons, you'll get respect, men will, for all the wrong reasons in all the wrong places. Do you remember the program Cheers? You remember Norm Peterson? What was he respected for? Because he was always on that stool in the corner of the bar. Was that something worthy of respect? No. But if you can't feel good when you go home and your, your wife or your, your spouse is always running you down and you're, you're always in trouble and you're always the object of her wrath and her anger and, and it's just, it's easier to be respected just by sitting in the corner of the bar consistently. At least he's getting respect from somebody. There have been a lot of guys who went to the basketball court, to the gym, went out with the guys at the bar, hung out in the sports bar, talked about which teams were uh, competing and, and which baseball team was most likely to win the championship or the series because they got respect for knowing their statistics being involved, having a place within that club, that group. And they couldn't feel safe at home, loved at home, respected at home. <laughs> but all you need is just one person to respect you, and you can put up with the humiliation from everybody else. Uh, <laughs> one of my favorite examples is Frank Burns. Uh, from the series MASH. We're talking about cultural things. We can all we know who these people are because we've seen these programs and reruns all these through the, through the year. Frank Burns was the surgeon who wasn't a very good surgeon and he wasn't a very good person and he wasn't a very nice person, but all he needed was the respect of Hot Lips Houlihan. <laughs> he could live in a tent where he was held in utter contempt. as long as he had one person, one person. I'd love for that person to be your wife. But how do you get to be in a relationship where she respects you so much that when you walk through the door, the first thought in her mind is, wow, he did it again. He went out there and he got the job done and he came home with the paycheck. He did it again. He's taken care of his family. Man, I am so proud to be his family his wife, his spouse. Wow, what a guy. And I'd love for your family, your marriage to be so strong that when he comes through the door, the first thought in his mind is, wow, there is the lady that makes my whole life worthwhile. 
she has been sitting here waiting for me to come in here for eight hours and I've done nothing but thinking about coming home and seeing her face at the end of the day. What a treasure to come home to. Would that describe your relationship? Probably not. Probably not. Why? The Bible says it's because we have a sinful nature. Women, not getting what they want, tend just to become critical and negative and angry at their husbands. They tend to just use words like idiot, bonehead, <laughs> a lot worse than that, but this is a clean video. And what does it do? It takes away every illusion that that man is a respected, worthy, honored individual. The one thing he needs more than anything else, including food and drink, he doesn't get at home. The woman who wants to be treasured actually ruins her chances to be valued beyond measure because she does not give what the husband needs that he has to have to be a healthy individual. And they're at cross purposes. One is an FM radio, and the other one is an AM radio, and they can't understand the signals coming from the other. You see, if you don't have a piece of paper like this, with the words respect on there, and then all the things that that means, admired, appreciated, approved, valued, trusted, trusted, if you don't have all of the words that re, re, spec means, all the synonyms, all the way down through, approved of, and you don't let those things be a part of your heart and mind on a daily basis when you think about him, when you respond to him, when you have a conversation with him, when you let him Share your time together. He can't be happy. And he's going to have real trouble cherishing you. Husbands, i got to be honest. Your sinful nature requires you, pushes you, pressures you to disrespect your wife, your spouse, your most valued person in your life. You cannot be happy as a man if you demean, ridicule, criticize, run down, and use dirty, filthy, ugly names and ideas toward your spouse, your wife, your girlfriend. You are in deep, deep trouble. Why? She needs to be cherished, valued, treasured, beyond any kind of measure of value. You don't keep lists of how much you spent to take care of her, that's only a tiny portion of what she is worth to you. Men, your sinful nature 
is at work if you call your wife ugly names and put her down. Repent of that. Stop it. You are making yourselves and your life miserable. And I can say that to you because I'm a man. I know how easy it comes out. I know how natural it is to just lash out with those uglinesses. I know. I live with the same nature you do. But listen to my heart. You cannot be held as a worthy, honored husband when you act that way. Well, I'm no lush. I'm no. Uh, I'm not out chasing skirts. I'm not out doing this. I'm not ripping people off. I don't do drugs. That isn't the issue. Are you doing what a husband needs to do to take care of his wife? Look at that list. Write down all the words that cherished means. Look it up in the dictionary. Look it up online. Cherished. Cared for. Kept clean and pure. Marriage is a combination of two people who are looking for two different things, looking at someone who is very different and giving that other person what they need, what they have to have to be happy. You can do this. Jesus Christ gave us the power to do this. He said, love each other as I have loved you. Listen to that. He said, love each other as I have loved you. Nobody was more worthy of respect and honor than he. No one did it better. Listen to him. Follow him. Call on him. And we can do this better.